are signs and wonders proof that you are a genuine Christian? There's charismatics and even a cult called the Last Reformation that believes the sign of a true believer is that you will be able to perform miracles. And they believe that this is the highest positive proof that one is a Christian. I want to look at what Jesus' perspective on miracles is and how important they are to Jesus. In uh, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse, 24, uh, verse 21, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, emphasizing the fact this person thinks that Jesus is their Lord, not just the term of respect, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven, on that day many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? Now, you would expect that if these people are not going to make it into God's kingdom, that Jesus would debate them as to whether these are genuine miracles. Oh, these are false prophecies. These are false wonders. No, he doesn't say that. He says, uh, verse 23, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So instead of debating whether these people perform genuine miracles, instead of asking these people, well, did you really have the Holy Spirit when you were performing these? He doesn't get into that debate. All Jesus is concerned about in letting someone into his house on the day of judgment is, did I know you? Verse 23, I will declare to them, I never knew you. And two, he says, depart from me, you what? Workers of lawlessness. If you are a worker of lawlessness, I don't care how much you, quote, believe the gospel, unquote, Jesus will not acknowledge you on the last day. Jesus needs to know you, and you need to be a worker of the works of your master. Everyone who is a disciple is made like his master. So um, then I want to flip over to Mark chapter 9. And Jesus is going to take a similar perspective with a complaint that John raises about someone who is casting out a demon in Jesus' name, but doesn't follow the group of disciples that are following Jesus. So listen, Mark 9, 38, John said to him, teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Now, Jesus doesn't at this point say, well, the guy was casting out a demon. That's clearly a sign that he's a Christian. That's not the perspective Jesus takes here. Listen, verse 39 of Mark 9. Jesus said, do not stop him. For no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of cold water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Jesus says the only thing that he gains by this guy casting out a demon in his name is, quote, no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Doesn't exactly sound like he's super confident the guy knows him. So what I want to say about the benefit of signs and wonders is that in the days of the apostles, the apostles had a, a tall order to convince the ancient world that one, Jesus, a crucified criminal in the eyes of the Romans, was the Messiah, and two, that Jesus was raised. Uh, from the dead on the third day and ascended to heaven. This is a tall order. And God knew that that was a tall order. So God appointed 
that the apostles and the apostles' companions in the, those days could perform miracles in great numbers. And this was important. Um, but um, I will say two things uh, about whether it's necessary to do miracles today. One, no one can chain the Holy Spirit. If a miracle is a miracle of God, the Holy Spirit is the real performer of that miracle. No one can enslave the Holy Spirit to any particular theology that says God can't move anymore. Performing a miracle is just the generosity of God. God can allow miracles to happen, and it is just the superabundance of God. I myself have seen some miracles. My own conversion story is that I accidentally overdosed on Zoloft um, while I was an agnostic at the time, and I asked Jesus to come and heal me from this pain of having accidentally taken too much Zoloft. And he literally took away all the pain instantly that I felt. That was a miracle that to me vindicated prayer to Jesus and Jesus being Lord. So Jesus can still use miracles today. He used it in my life. But let's not assume that someone who performs a miracle is necessarily from God, even if it's genuinely the Holy Spirit. Because these people in Matthew 7 that performed prophecies, uh, that did works that were mighty in Jesus' name, are not received by the Lord. It's more important, I think, to be skilled in winning souls to Christ. And for all the uh, things that are surrounding Lonnie Frisbee uh, lately on YouTube, the interest from the Jesus Revolution movie, which I think is justified, is a very interesting guy. And I think God genuinely used him. But Lonnie performing miracles or Lonnie doing signs, it doesn't matter. What matters is that souls were won to the faith. I think that is a far more important metric. And that's something that, by the way, Lonnie would have agreed with. Lonnie was far more interested in having souls come to know Christ, having souls come to be filled with God's Holy Spirit, than he was with miracles, as much as he, I'm sure he loved those things. Um, I hope that this video is helpful. Remember that Matthew chapter 24 says that uh, false Christs and false prophets will arise and deceive many. They, were, they will perform signs is what Matthew 24 says. So don't be deceived by signs. Don't be deceived by wonders. Even if something is performed by the Holy Spirit by someone, doesn't even mean that they're Christian. More important, be known by Christ. Do the works of Christ. And that's all I have to say. Have a good evening.